startup maintenance on the converted. Running a print head clean to ensure all ink is flowing. With this guy, we're going to uncover him. And turn it on. That's all to it with the white toner. And it has been a long time since I print with this. So we'll see. All right, the reason that error happened was because I forgot I had legal sized paper in here and I set the paper setting to um, letter. And so when that happens, the fuser um, causes a paper jam because it assumes it sh shipped out the paper after 11 inches. Um, but other than that, the print, you saw how fast it was within, I would say, two to three seconds, the entire print was printed. Um, as you saw with the program, I don't use any color correction or anything of that sort. Let's take a look at the original image here. One second. Okay. This is the original image. So the white is coming out yellow, but I'll tell you why that's happening on my toner. That is because my white is um, pretty low on the toner. But as you see, when the toner is low, it leaves sporadic spots without it. However, this is... Um, Pretty much as much as it'll coat it too. Where you see that there is, it's just that light coat of white toner that it lays. The white also lays in the adhesive B sheet that comes with this machine. Okay? So. Alright guys, so. Uh, we did the startup testing of both printers. One, the XP inkjet converted was left off for just overnight without the capping station scenario um, that has a maintenance behind 
converting the inkjet printers to print white, you do have to learn what wet capping is. Um, it's part of your daily maintenance. So on the startup, I would say the white toner printer has it beat. Um, the white toner printer has not been used in a month and it printed normally. I didn't have to do any maintenance, just turn it on and hit print. So with the startup in the morning process to get your work day ready, I would say the white toner has it beat because of course it's equipped to do what it does, not convert it. So one point for white toner. That's okay. Now, it did take me a little longer to um, get the XP rolling this morning because A, I forgot to refill my cartridges. I had the tank a lot lower than it needed to be, which was causing the flow problem of it automatically flowing in. I told myself I was going to fix that yesterday. I got wrapped up on my actual business side of the aspect and totally forgot about it. So this morning was a little longer process, but in terms to that, even if I would not have done that, um, the process to start it up in the morning is longer on DTF than it is um, white toner transfers. Okay, so um, on the print speed, um, it took eight minutes, though the print was a little bigger for the um, inkjet XP converted to print. Um, that's 100% inks on all of them. And that was just to uh, see at its maximum potential how long it would take to print an image. So it took eight minutes um, for that process to happen on the DTF printer direct to film printer on the white toner printer it was smaller however the same amount of time applies for printing a bigger image or a smaller image two seconds maximum so the print speed on the white toner has it beat by a lot so two points so far for white toner startup and printing speed colors um it doesn't take the program for um, the white toner doesn't take pre-made images well if the colors aren't coded correctly so bear in mind if you're using images you take from the internet like I have done so um, in this scenario just because I'm obsessed with the little spaceman for some reason um, so bear in mind that that if you are the original creator you'll get the colors you inputted no problem if not it does not web code um so you're gonna have to play with the brightness saturation um with white toner lowering the brightness 10 and raising the saturation 10 gives it a very vibrant color I'm going to test that theory with the DTF as well. So when I say that I'm really taking this to the next level and testing it side by side, remember, the white toner printer is almost $4,000 plus the taxes. Um, and that's the bare minimum. There is other models that run into nine, $10,000, $12,000. So from four dollars to $12,000, um, is the white toner printer uh, to refill your cartridges is about twelve to sixteen hundred dollars um, and the paper is about another three hundred dollars for the A and B sheet so guys there's a pretty hefty price tag that comes with it um, though you're seeing the speed in print you're seeing the uh, speed in there's no maintenance needed on it whatsoever but it does have a fuser that if it goes bad that part costs six hundred dollars without the fuser the white toner printer does not do its job because that's essentially the heat element that raises temperature to almost 400 degrees to do what it's doing and transfer the toner to the sheet 
um, you will also need a good press for that. I touched these topics on comparing DTF to white toner. So again, the price per per print is up there because of the fact that you have to factor in what it costs. Um, and like any other printer, all these things that are maintenance have a life, a print life on them. Um, Uninet or iColor tells you you get 7,000 prints. That is a lie because when you uh, raise the top or the ink percentage or the toner percentage so that you can get the correct vibrancy and colors you get about 200 if that 300 um prints per refill which is 1600 dollars a pop guys so do the math i like to be affordable for my customers i also like to have quality um, don't get me wrong, the idea of not weeding, no maintenance, that scenario is great. But when DTF comes into place, the maintenance is a little tedious. Um, but I guess once you have it down like anything else, um, it should be easy. So, <coughs> excuse me, so far, I don't think that um, I'm still leaning to white toner, really, because I see that price tag, and it has to roll off into the product for the customer, and I just don't want to do that to my customers. So, um, I'm still leaning to DTF. You do need a good press for the white toner, as well as it would be very much so convenient to um, purchase a curing oven for... DTF. So that's the next uh, portion of the video. Now I have the press heating up. I'm going to show you the process of marrying A sheet to B sheet on white toner printer and how long that takes and the process of the powder coating and pressing or er, and curing on the press and what that process takes. And then of course the pressing process, the pulling process, yada, yada, yada. We're going to get there, guys. So um, watch the commercial, stick with me, and let's see which one wins at the end because my goal is quality, guys. Um, so we're going to see which one beats what. At the end of the day, if the quality is less with the DTF, I will stick with my white toner and continue to pay that price tag for quality because that's what i'm about all right this is dtf no color correction no icc profile the pink could be a little lighter but that could be coding issues like i said i didn't make this image if i were to input it and see what color code it has i guarantee it is that pink and you're just not seeing it here. All right, guys. So here is the DTF. I don't have a shaker um, just yet. So what I am going to do is just uh, lay the powder down like this. Oh, I have to leave it open, of course. to make sure the whole design got coated. And I'm gonna turn it over and flick it. I don't care to make a mess. 
All right, that looks like an actual good coat. All right, let me turn the camera over so you guys can see the coating. This is not cured yet. To prepare this image, all you would need is the B sheet. I'm actually going to use a small B sheet from the smaller one. You always end up with extra adhesive sometimes because, well, um, mess things up sometimes, even with transfers. So. This is the process of getting it ready for the press. You just place the front of the sheet to the back of B sheet and wait for the press to get to 325. That is the process of getting A and B ready for the press versus having to shake the adhesive on there on the press. All right, guys, so I have the press set to 325, 120 seconds. For the marrying of the A sheet and B sheet for white toner prints, you require to shut the press and get the bottom plate really hot. People have issues with marrying the image um, successfully because the bottom plate in gets um, or is cold or they have to put it through a laminate machine. I haven't had to have that issue, thankfully. Um, hey guys, I just found my little stopper that I was on my knees for four hours trying to find. <laughs> anyway, uh, you don't really have to do the 120 seconds when you're getting the bottom plate hot, but I do like to get it nice and hot. Then you'll take... like so a piece of parchment paper and put it on top and you close the press for 120 seconds i hope it's not too hot for my phone right there grab another remote Guys, with white toner printing, marrying A sheet to B sheet, if you don't have a press that heats up evenly, the adhesive does not adhere to the toner correctly, leading to some spots um, not having, obviously, adhesion and not sticking to your shirt. So... Remember that when you're factoring in white toner. Again, at the end of the video, I'm going to conclude everything I'm showing you guys. So no worries. All right, there's also a trick to the press. Guys, I'm gonna raise it because I had the temperature. When this comes up, you have to rub the back of the garment or the back of the of the adhesive for a second or so. And do not remove the sheet from the press. And pull in one consistent motion. Otherwise, you're gonna have lines. And that's the process of marrying the sheet. All right, let's move on to the DTF. All right, so.
so for this guys I accidentally touched the transfer and it caused that all right so we're gonna keep the press that much opened hovering over it for two minutes Now, I do plan on purchasing the $300 oven to cure this. looks milky and not glossy it still needs more time so we're gonna give it about another minute All right, much better. It is glossy. Sorta. Well, I hope I cured it correctly here. All right. All right, I have a piece of cloth here with the uh white toner print it requires 325 for 30 seconds medium to uh medium pressure This is cold peel, so I'm going to bring it over and place it in front of my AC. They sell these heat packets that are cold packets that you can utilize to set on there. And it has to be completely cool. Otherwise, this will happen. Where the design stays stuck to the sheet and does not come off. Let it completely cool. This also happens if your adhesive did not successfully marry together. And this is white toner. You can see when I stretch this, there are cuts now in the garment and it looks stretched. All right, a minute in, it's still a little warm. I do have the AC here hitting straight down, so when I'm stacking shirts one on top of the other, it's cooling down. All right, once it is cool,
you will then pull the paper off. I didn't have an even press, so some of my design stayed. The collar was there, but that's okay. The main image, as you see, has no issues. Now, this has a shiny texture. It requires a sheet called T-Seal and a second press. Like to lower the temperature down so that um, it's not so hot. Otherwise, it will dole out the image. However, we're gonna give this five to 10 seconds. And as you see, it loses that whole shine and kind of fuses in with the fabric. You'll want to stretch while it's hot. All right, let's press. All right, we are now going to press the DTF transfer. And we're gonna do 325 for 10 seconds. And this is supposed to be hot peel. Though the last time I tried that, the design came up and same with the white toner. So you have to kind of do this if it's too hot. We're gonna bring it over here and let it cool. All right, I'm gonna let it cool a little bit prior to pulling it off. Just a second. Now, I love the feel to this. I love that you can stretch it. All right, let's go talk. All right, guys, so all in all, Final image white toner. Feels just like 3GO Peak paper. DTF. It's more of a smooth feel, like a pla uh, a, um, can't explain the texture, not a paper feel, but there's a feel to it. Now. I'm obsessed with this. Let's talk numbers, guys. The marrying of the A and B sheet with white toner has been a nightmare for some people. So maybe cleaning and maintenancing a printer isn't so bad for some. Fortunate for me, I hit the ground running with the printer and the pressing and the marrying sheets, though there was a time that humidity affected the print because um, that's another thing you have to look at. The humidity levels in the room have to be at a certain um, level each and every time 
so that your papers are not affected, the toner is not affected. If there is um, static, remember you're dealing with powder, which that's what toner is, and the prints are gonna be missing holes somewhere and things like that. So you still have your heap of problems coming with white toner printer with a price tag of $1,600 per 300 prints. Now I'm going to somewhere in this video provide you the breakdown of cost to print on the white toner. Now I am providing both breakdowns. The one I believed in the beginning where I did all my homework prior to purchasing one and how this would be relevant in my business, day, my day to day business. I got those numbers off of 7,000 prints. The manufacturer's uh, recommendation of what um, of what prints we would get but that's not the case if you want to successfully have a vibrant image that transfers together a and b etc etc so you get i i also did a second set of numbers um based on how many prints i got and the numbers i was dealt with and pricing to um profit and such so bear in mind that it's going to be a lengthy process but i suggest you um read it thoroughly because there's still money to be made with the white toner but the cost to start up is a lot heftier than the cost to dtf now as far as fill i already love the feel of um the dtf compared to white toner now when you rasterize your image of course had i taken out the black um, and utilized the garment color it would have been enough rasterization in this image to not have to actually put it in with um, a program and or photoshop same thing with this Okay, so I, you know, I want you to take note in the design. Sorry, guys, I was just uh, reading a message here. Okay, so the cost to start up DTF is fairly cheap, uh, a third, I would say, at most, compared to white toner printer. Um, I'm sure the parts for any repair on an inkjet is going to be a lot cheaper than the white toner printer. Um, the process in which you print and press, it's kind of the same amount of time. Uh, you have to, you know, marry these for 120 seconds and peel at a, you know, consistent, even rate. Um, you have to put this under the press for two minutes um, if you purchase the press that uh, or yeah the press to cure DTF films then you'll cut it down to a minute or so um, and not have to guess if it's done or not so it's something you can actually do to avoid uh, to lessen the time with DTF as where you cannot lessen the time because it requires that amount of time though my press has been hot enough that i have done it it's not consistent results okay now i know that this will last in the wash about um 10 15 wash if there's no jeans in it um i'm gonna actually pull on the garment so you guys can see it didn't rip but it looks stretched I'm feeling for any cracks if it feels cracked or not this has way more stretchability than the white toner and it does not feel cracked. It actually almost feels more like one with the shirt when you stretch it that far out. All right.
moment. I'm going to do a close-up of what it looks like. Um... print so all in all i'm selling my white toner guys as soon as i iron out all the kinks i mean people ask why would you want to um to turn away a plug and play the price tag on it doesn't give you room for um making a good profit unless you're really sticking it to your customers and again if you know me i'm about affordability as well as don't get me wrong it felt like a printable vinyl the white toner but that was okay because it's better than cutting vinyl and using um the three geo peak and you had to cut it but it got down to there were times where i preferred to cut the three geo peak and transfer it then to waste the money on the white toner so it just sat there um when i had technical errors in my lab and i needed to speed things up and just get it done fast because i got more orders in my hands than i planned to i would fire it up and and you know and do it but again um, I had to be in my lab before the sun came out so that the humidity in here, because obviously you guys know my situation, um, in my she shed, um, the humidity in here after 12, 1 o'clock is so bad that I will not get a successful Mary. I have wasted a whole pack of paper trying to do so and complete an order. So, um you still have those issues with white toner printing again with the price tag i have no doubt in my mind that this is going to last um outlast the white toner print now the only thing i would say is upon looking at the image my printer print or the dtf printed what would be blue or a light purple tint on the pants it did it black so i am very much going to assume that you're going to need a color profile to successfully print the correct colors my next step guys so don't quote me on this if it's something you've tried and you know for certain drop it in the comments below um i will throw these in the wash now a few times i'm gonna wash and dry wash and dry back to back to back and see where that gets me guys so overall i'm down with dtf and i am okay with the maintenance that it that um comes behind it i dealt with that with the 7720s when i converted them there was no videos out there a bunch of crickets um when it came to it and i dealt with all the problems that it brought before there was any videos on it so if i survived that during my first year of being open because it was within months of me starting business i can definitely survive the maintenance of dtf for the benefits i am obsessed with what it feels like um don't get me wrong i'm not bashing white toner the quality is there because i was providing it to my customer but it is not better than dtf um and that's just on right now from the press to pulling it and stretching it again the startup yada yada it has it beat but um eventually we're gonna have all the tools necessary for the printers we are converting and it's going to become second nature to us i can go through any troubleshoot on the workforce 7720 with my eyes closed and i can guarantee anyone i can fix theirs as long as their print head is not at the end of their life and in the beginning i couldn't do that and i'm like gee i made a mistake and I'm letting go of my Cricut to do sublimation, and now I got two of these printers I don't know what to do with. But I got through it, and I learned, and I taught, and I'm happy that I stuck with it because I got two of the most sought-after sought after printers. 
so I'm going to stick with this DTF because it's the next best thing. And for a fraction of the price, uh, if you're lazy and you, and, you know, you feel like the maintenance is not worth your time, then by all means, go out there and pay five to ten times the amount to do white toner. But I'm literally putting my white toner printer up on the market. The, oh, not to mention, you also need a RIP software for white toner printing. So, if you uh, are going with Uninet, they have a couple that are about $800 to $1,000. So, that's another thing that you have to pay attention to when you're purchasing. So, some people are worried about three, dollars $400 on this uh, CAD link and um, Acro RIP print optimizer and the other print softwares for the uninet printers are 800 to a thousand dollars so um once again i'm co-signing on dtf guys this is what i'm bringing to my business also you guys just come on in and take the journey of maintenancing and troubleshooting whatever happens to this printer and then before you know it We'll have all these kinks ironed out, and when it's time to press the kinks again, we'll know just exactly what to do. Um, and I can throw that extra money in my pocket and eventually go DTG or, or DTF um, on a bigger scale. So, uh, again, it's, it's really based on your ambition and what you're wanting to do. If you're willing to sacrifice quality and money for uh, easy have at it i'm not willing to do that if i can provide my customers an affordable price they'll always come back to me okay and or to you so um affordability is the goal if they're gonna pay 30 bucks for a t-shirt they can go to the mall and pay that guys think about it we're not a name brand though we shouldn't sell ourselves short when people think of custom items or people think of these t-shirts they think of a one-time use if you're charging that much your product better back up that price and white toner is not going to back it up in the long run all right let me know um what your advantages and disadvantages are with dtf or white toner whichever you have or let me know if you have any questions guys all I ask is that you like, comment, subscribe, share the videos. Um, I'm not asking of anything. I'm not charging you guys anything. I'm really just trying to get the information out there as fast as possible. And um, with an unbiased opinion on what I'm doing based on me. Um, you know, based on where I want to take my business. So, rather you take the advice or not is all on you, but I'm here to give it, all right? Just like, comment, follow, subscribe, join my group, share my group, share my YouTube, guys. Let's get this information out there. But most important, get your printers before they're sold out.